Welcome to the Neighborhood Matching Fund workshop for the September round of the Community Partnership Fund. My name is Daniel Sims. I am the Community Grants Supervisor, and joining me on the webinar are the Neighborhood Matching Fund Project Managers, Yoon Petrie, Karen Sealander, and Juan Martinez, as well as our Contract Specialist, Sharon Starr, and the Matching Fund Administrative Assistant, Esprit Ottenry. I first would like to take care of a few housekeeping items. The workshop will be recorded and posted on DON's Front Porch website. The link is in the chat. If you haven't already, we encourage you to RSVP on the Matching Fund webpage so we can provide you with application guidelines and other materials that we will discuss. The link to the webpage is in the chat. We ask that all participants mute themselves so the presenters can be clearly heard. The presentation will last no longer than 45 minutes and at the conclusion of the presentation, we will allow another 45 minutes for questions and answers. If you think of a question during the presentation, please post the question in the chat and we will answer your question during the Q&A portion of our program. Our intentions for the workshop are to provide you with an overview of the Neighborhood Matching Fund, to review our program materials and tips to help you create a competitive application, as well as answer any questions you may have. The Neighborhood Matching Fund is a partnership between the city and the community. Historically, we have funded an average of $3 million spread across 200 projects per year. For the September round, we have a maximum of $900,000 in project awards. Next slide, please. The Neighborhood Matching Fund was created in 1988 to provide city resources to fund projects that help make our community stronger and more connected. Since then, we funded over 5,000 projects across the city. Here, you see some examples of projects previously funded with neighborhood matching funds. The boots portion of the iconic Hats and Boots in Georgetown, the China Gate in the Chinatown International District, a public space where exercise equipment was installed, and some columns under I-5 that were painted with the colorful mural. So public art, physical improvements, parks, right-of-ways, installing or upgrading school playgrounds, these are all common neighborhood matching fund projects. We also fund educational projects that teach emergency preparedness, cultural exchange, and social justice projects, among many other project ideas. I would like to turn it over to Karen Sealander to talk about the type of projects we fund. Next slide, please. Thanks, Daniel. We fund a wide variety of projects, but they all need to meet some basic eligibility criteria. Neighborhood matching fund projects must provide a community benefit, be free and open to the public, involve community members, provide community match, and occur within the Seattle city limits. If it's a physical improvement project, you must also have property owner permission at the time of application. Next slide, please. For the current funding opportunity, there are some additional requirements due to the public health emergency. In order to apply, your project must follow current public health guidelines in King County. The link on this slide will provide information about the current guidelines. We understand that the public health guidelines can change over time, so structure your project activities according to the current guidelines. If the guidelines change, we will work with you to adjust project activities as necessary. Next slide, please. To apply to the Neighborhood Matching Fund, there are three steps to take. Step one, review the Neighborhood Matching Fund 2021 guidelines, application worksheet, fiscal sponsor information, and department criteria. These documents contain the information we are sharing here today and will be available in the chat feature of this workshop. We can also email them to you if requested. Step two, if you're not already working with a Neighborhood Matching Fund project manager, contact us to get a project manager assigned to you. Talk with your project manager about your project idea to see if it is eligible and to get more detailed information about requirements for your specific project. Project managers can also review your application prior to submitting it to make sure it's complete and has all the necessary information. Step three, Register in Web Grants, our online grant system, where applications are completed and submitted. If awarded, the contracting and grant management are also accomplished via Web Grants. 
This slide shows the link to get into Web Grants and a picture of the registration or login page. As you can see, you click register here, fill out the information, and when the registration is approved, you'll receive a username and password to access Web Grants. If you have any questions about navigating Web Grants, please email or call your project manager for assistance. Next slide, please. Who should apply? We encourage applications from neighborhood groups, community organizations, informal or ad hoc groups, and business organizations. A unique feature of Neighborhood Matching Fund is that we fund informal or ad hoc groups. These groups are not formal organizations and can be as simple as a group of neighbors getting together just to apply for and complete one project. Next slide, please. The Neighborhood Matching Fund is made up of two funds, the Small Sparks Fund and the Community Partnership Fund. They use the same guidelines and the same application. The funds differ in the dollar amounts of the awards, the timelines for review, award, contracting, and the time allowed to complete the projects. Next slide, please. The Small Sparks Fund provides funding for projects with budgets up to $5,000. Applications are accepted on a rolling basis through October 29th. The time it takes to review, award, and contract Small Sparks projects is shown here, and Small Sparks projects are expected to be completed in six months. Next slide, please. The Community Partnership Fund is for projects with budgets between $5,000 and $50,000. This year, there are two opportunities to apply. One was on April 5th, and the current funding opportunity is open now in Web Grants, and the deadline for applications to be submitted is September 13th at 5 p.m. Community Partnership Fund projects are expected to be completed within one year. Next slide, please. Now we will talk about the Neighborhood Matching Fund application. When you go into Web Grants and start an application, you have to complete each section before you can go on to the next. So we, re we created an application worksheet. It's one of the documents we referred to earlier, and it shows what the entire web application in Web Grants looks like. This helps you to know what information you will need to gather and have ready before you get started on an application in Web Grants. The NMF application is scored based about 50% on building community partnerships and 50% on project readiness. Building community partnerships includes a description of how your project will provide a community or public benefit. It also includes a description of how you will re reach out to the community and let them know about your project and invite them to participate. Please include specifics on who you are reaching out to and how you are doing outreach. For example, are you using electronic neighborhood communications such as newsletters and blogs or attending community meetings to talk about your project? There's also a question about the relationships that will be developed through the project. This is an important aspect of neighborhood matching fund projects. After a matching fund project has been completed, we often hear from the grantees that in addition to whatever the specific project outcome was, the relationships formed in the community during the project are just as valuable. The application also asks you to describe the volunteer opportunities. This is a good exercise in thinking through everything that will need to get done and how many volunteers you might need. Next slide, please. Project readiness. When we say project readiness, we mean are you ready to proceed with your project within two months? There is more than one funding opportunity each year, and we want to keep the neighborhood matching fund dollars moving out into the community as quickly as possible. If you are not ready to proceed, we recommend that you wait and apply later. Project readiness also includes property owner permission. Having a leadership committee of 10 to 7 to 10 people, the majority of which live or work in Seattle, and a work plan that includes all the major activities needed to complete the project within the expected timeline. Now we will hear from Yoon Petrie, who will talk about the budget section of the application. Next slide, please. Thanks, Karen. 
Budget expenses traditionally fall into four categories and you don't have to have something in every category. Categories are personnel, professional services, supplies and materials, and construction and capital. The only way you would have anything in construction and capital is if you're building something such as a park, a playground, or a site improvements. So if you're not doing that, you can ignore that category entirely. Now, if you're hiring someone on a long-term basis to work on the project, such as a project manager, then you would have something in the personnel category. You would need to tell us what skills and abilities are needed for the position, the number of hours the person will be working, their compensation, and what exactly they're going to do on the project. It would be helpful if you break it down month by month with information on the position's monthly deliverables. So when it's time to pay them, we know exactly what they should have accomplished. Professional services. Do you need a carpenter, videographer, or a landscape architect? If so, those are the expenses that would go into professional services. We ask you to tell us again about their services and skill levels needed for the positions. Supplies and materials. Are you buying coffee, tools, or food for an event? That is what would be in supplies and materials. And if it's necessary for you to attach additional information about your budget, that would make the budget more that would make the budget more meaningful. There will be a place to do that as well. Next slide, please. The match. I can tell you now, you will not be a successful applicant in the neighborhood matching fund process if you do, if you do not have match. We rely on the community to bring something to the table to make the projects happen. As we mentioned several times throughout the presentation, volunteerism is a core value of the Neighborhood Matching Fund. And it's obvious from this slide how important that is for us because it is the first item listed. You can start tracking volunteer time starting from the date of, of the application due date, which is September 13th. We want to give you credit for those hours as match because we know your team will continue to meet after the application has been submitted to keep the project on track. So remember to record those volunteer hours. Donated professional services. Is there a professional who's going to donate a specific task to this, to this project? The value of professional services is up to $100 per hour. And the key word here is up to because not every professional services will be paid at $100 per hour. We would ask you to have the professional send you an email or a letter, something that indicates they're going to provide the work, the number of hours they're going to provide, and the value of that service. Cash. If your project needs more cash than you can get from the Neighborhood Matching Fund, you need to have that cash ready to go at the time of the application. So you would need to include some type of documentation or verification, such as a bank statement. If you do provide a bank statement, please cross out your account number and other personal information, but do indicate that money is available and ready for the project. Donated supplies and materials. If you're getting something donated, for example, from Costco is providing you food or Lowe's or Home Depot is, pro is giving you um, tools, whatever that is, you'll need a letter or email from that person or entity indicating that the donation is ready and available to the project. Next slide, please. Match pledge form. This is where you list all leadership committee members and other volunteers. It lets us know that 
people involved or willing to be involved in the project. Detailed volunteer information is not needed. However, we do ask you to give us some information about who they are. We realize that not everyone is comfortable giving a lot of personal information. So if you cannot get an address, you can use the address of the project. But we do need, but we do need something at a minimum, a name and an email. Each project will need a fiscal sponsor. That's because we, the city, do not pay your bills directly. We will not write a check to a vendor or to you personally, but we will pay your bills through our fiscal sponsor. Fiscal sponsor is a 501c3 organization who will act as a trustee of the funds provided by the city and will assume the financial responsibilities of the project. Because some fiscal sponsors charge for their services, you can put the cost of that in your budget. Fiscal sponsors can also provide insurance. Every project must have commercial general liability insurance. You can put the cost of that in your budget, but usually if you're an ad hoc group or you're just starting out, it's cheaper to have your fiscal sponsor either add you to theirs or purchase it for you. Your project manager can give you more information about that. Attachments are very important. They are important because they help you document your match. So if you have donations of materials or people doing work, you should have that as an attachment. If you're hiring a person and you wanna let us know about their skills, abilities, and what they're gonna accomplish, that will be an attachment. Another reason attachment is important is because they help complete your matching fund story for us. Again, one of the core value of the fund is the community match. This means that you need to match your award with the contribution from the community. Before you submit the application, take one last look at your match and make sure that your minimum match requirement is at least one half of the requested amount from the city. So if you're asking us for $50,000, you must demonstrate and document a minimum community match of 25,000. Now I'll turn it over to our manager, Daniel. Next slide, please. So if there's one thing we hope you can take away with you from today's workshop, that would be to please connect with and work with a neighborhood fund project manager early and often throughout the process. Project managers can help you in, a, in many different ways. One is they can meet with you and your group virtually to discuss your project and answer any specific questions you may have about your project. They can also offer help with the City of Seattle web grant system. So if you're having trouble logging in, or you're not sure if your attachments were submitted correctly, or you have problems entering information in the volunteer pledge section, these are things that the project manager can help you troubleshoot. The project manager can also help you connect with and navigate through city departments and make sure you find the right department contact. If you have a street or park improvement project, that may require permits and or property owner permission, and your project manager can help you get the can help you get to the right contact. Your project manager can also help review your application prior to submission. I'm hoping this is something that everybody will take advantage of because the last thing you want is to put all this hard work into submitting an application, but later you learn that there's something on your application that just doesn't meet our basic requirements. And that's something that your project manager can easily point out to you in your draft application. Please do submit your project application to your project manager at least two weeks before the deadline. Applications are due by 5 p.m. sharp on Monday, September 13th. Our hope is that by Friday, September 10th, your application is already 80 to 90% complete. And maybe you're adding something new at the last minute, or you need to make some minor tweaks in your application. 
If you contact us on Friday about the concept of your project and you haven't really started anything for your application, it's just not realistic to expect that we'll be able to help you finish your application at that time. But we still may be able to provide some basic information, but likely we'll, rec we'll recommend that you apply for the next round. Next slide, please. Here is the contact information of our neighborhood matching fund team. Currently, we have three project managers. If you're already working with the project manager, that's a good start. But if you haven't worked with one or you don't have one yet, don't worry. The links should be available in the chat box. Um, if you're calling in today and you can't see the chat box, you can't and you can't see the links, just give us a call. Our phone number to the NMF main line is 206-233-0093. Again, that's 206-233-0093. Next slide, please. Here's a photo of our team. Um, and at this point in time, we have reached the end of the presentation portion of our program. Um, and we will turn it over to the Q&A. And first, we'll start by answering any questions that were posted in the chat during the presentation. Thank you. That's that. 